Okay, so this video is going to be power places and networks for IB geography, and the part of the syllabus is globalization indices showing how countries participate in global interactions. So, the definition of globalization is the growing interdependence of countries worldwide through increasing volume and variety of cross border in transactions in goods and services and of capital flows and the rapid. <laughs> what? diffusion of technology um, as defined by the IMF so the idea of globalization can be split into three parts which are political social and economic and political kind of tends to discuss the growth of Western democracies globally and the decline of centralized economies and there are obviously more factors that could be taken into account socially it could be the impact of Western culture art media so technology use, internet, sport and leisure. Then economic is the growth of TNCs, but obviously there are lots more um, different factors and we'll discuss those now when we look at four different indicators that are used for globalization. So here are the four different indicators, or actually five. Cough index, current index, EY globalization index, new globalization index, Maastricht globalization index. Um, the one you should probably focus on most would be the coffee index because I think that's most used. Um, but in an essay, it might be good, for example, if you have to evaluate the indicators to mention the Kearney index, the EY, the new, and the Maastricht. Um, as I think Kearney has kind of been discontinued, um, like because coffee index is much more widely used. But now I'm going to go through each one and what they measure yeah okay so first of all the cough index so the cough index measures politically in terms of globalization it measures the number of embassies and high commissions the number of international organizations un peace missions socially it measures personal contacts telecom traffic government and worker transfers foreign direct investment information flows number of internet tv radio international news users and economically, it measures the flow of goods, services, income, labor, restrictions to trade and capital, so like protectionism. And it measures, it has 187 countries, um, 29, uh, 23 vari va variables, and it takes reliable data sources such as the UN and the World Bank's data. Okay, now we're going to look at the Kearney Index. So it measures, again, social, economic, and political dimension of globalization. It has done since the 70s, um, whilst the Kauf Index, I think, started in 2003, 2002 or 2003. So that's obviously has been there for a longer time, um, although it's not as, it's kind of arguably not as good as the cough index as a measurement but it measures economic integration through foreign trade personal context through international calls technological connectivity and political engagement through organizations such as the un it covers 96 percent of global gdp 84 percent of world population um however it only has 72 72 countries rather than 187 um, and factors are hard to measure, such as environmental, cultural factors that they might want to include. And it also isn't very definitive towards what they believe globalization truly is. Um, yeah, okay. Now we're going to move on to the EY Globalization Index. So this measures the 60 largest countries by GDP for their globalization. And it measures openness to trade, capital flows, exchange of technology and ideas, labor movements, and cultural integration. So arguably kind of less robust than Kauf Index and maybe even the Kearney Index. Um, okay, new globalization index. So this measures the distance traveled by goods traded. So it's obviously not very like, com like complex um, and like multifaceted enough to measure all aspects of globalization. And there's the Maastricht Globalization Index, which kind of includes political, social, and economic, but also measures environmental, military, and sustainability. So that arguably could be better, but it is very difficult to, to measure things like environmental damage or sustainability. Like, it's very, 
it's just a very difficult thing to try to make into a numerical value. Okay, so after we've looked at this kind of social, economic, and um, political parts of globalization, we're going to go on to this final definition, which is the definition of global interaction. So this is kind of a way to describe the two-way and complex process whereby cultural traits and commodities may be adopted, adapted, or resisted by societies. The process is neither inevitable nor universal.